Hello. In a previous video, we presented two important formulas that are often used in probability theory. One involves conditional probabilities, and the other involves conditional expectations. Let me show you the formulas briefly. Here is the formula with conditional probabilities. It expresses the probability of an event B in terms of conditional probabilities, and these conditional probabilities are relative to the sets AN, where AN forms a partition of the sample space. Picture was down here. Here we have a partition A1, A2, A3. Here we have an event B, and we want the probability of the entire event B in terms of the events conditioned on the different sets in the partition. As I mentioned before, if I want to consider the event B conditioned on event A3, I only look at the portion of B inside of A3. So you can review that video if you want to refresh yourself on those concepts. Similarly, there's a formula for conditional expectation that expresses the expectation of a random variable in terms of a sum of expectations of the random variable conditioned on different sets in the partition times the probability of different sets in the partition. So those are our two key formulas, and we'll be using these to prove some facts about Markov chains. So let us apply the conditional probability and conditional expectation formulas to the case of recurrent and transient stationary Markov chains. Now what do I mean by stationary? Stationary means that there is a fixed transition matrix, which is often denoted by Pij. Okay. All right. So in the text, definition 1.11, page 25, a state J in a Markov chain is called recurrent if the recurrence time of the state is finite with probability 1. That is, the probability that Tj is less than infinity is equal to 1. In other words, state J is recurrent if a Markov chain that reaches state J will certainly return to state J with probability 1. In still other words, once the Markov chain has reached state J, it can never escape permanently, but it will always come back. Right. So it's good to visualize what's going on in Markov chains. Now in a Markov chain, you have several states which I will denote as points. Okay. If I start in state J, then I will move to some other state. I could go back to state J. I could move to some other state. Right. So you should think of Markov chain as moving between states. All right. Now, subsequent to this step, it will have other steps. Right. It will continue to go to another step. It might go to some other step some other step, some other step. A Markov chain is recurrent if the chain will return to state J eventually. Now once it comes back to J, it will go out again and then come back. So it's important to realize that recurrent means that if the chain starts at J, it will return to J. But if any time during the process, the state comes to J, it will also return to J. Okay. So let me say it this way. Uh, if the chain reaches J or any step, it's just the same as if the chain has started in state J. That's why we have a stationary Markov chain. All right? It's the same as if the chain started in J. So you can think of just every time you reach J, it's like restarting the chain all over again. You're back in the original situation. So this is the definition of a recurrent state in a Markov chain, according to the Stochastic Processes book by Kasumu. Now, in Theorem 1.8, it states that a state J is recurrent if the expected number of returns to state J is infinite. Right, you can look at that 
Theorem 1.8, it's on a later page in the book, and it says that the state is recurrent if the expected number of returns to state J is infinite. We can write that as expectation of NJ equal to infinity. NJ was defined as the number of returns to state J given the change starting in J, state J, and that's a random variable as well. Now, this is not quite the same thing as the original definition of recurrence. The original definition of recurrence says that the time of returning to state J will be finite with probability 1. This one is saying that the expected number of returns is infinite. This is not quite the same thing. Can we show that these two definitions are equivalent? It's really necessary to show they're equivalent and the book does not do this. So we will fill in this gap in the book. Actually, it turns out that instead of saying the expectation of nj is equal to infinity, we should use a stronger condition. The probability that nj is less than infinity is equal to zero. Now that's the same thing as saying the probability that nj equals infinity is equal to one. And you can think about why these two statements are equivalent nj less than infinity has probability 0 is the same thing as saying that nj equal infinity has probability 1. Now this statement that the probability of nj equal infinity is equal to 1 is stronger than this statement the expectation of nj is equal to infinity. If this is true then this will be true. However, if this is true this is not necessarily true. All right. So in this exercise, you will show that these two are not necessarily equivalent. In the exercise, first you will prove that for any non-negative random variable with a probability xj less than infinity is equal to zero, it must be true that the expectation of x is equal to infinity. In other words, if this probability statement is true, then the expectation statement must also be true. So you can prove that. What you should do is use the definition of expected value. And here you have a partition between two events. So you can use the conditional expectation formula. Now you also want to show that this condition, that the expectation of the number of returns is infinity does not necessarily imply the second condition. So, give an example of a random variable whose expectation is infinite, and here let's call this a non-negative random variable, but the probability that the random variable is less than infinity is not equal to zero. In other words, Condi the first condition holds, but the second condition does not. Now, you should think of a very simple example. In fact, you can choose a random variable that takes two values, and you can choose those two values as one in infinity. Now, to specify a random variable, all you need to do is specify the values it takes and the probabilities of those values. So that's an exercise. I'm trying to set the stage for what we're trying to do. We're trying to show that two different definitions of recurrence used in the book are in fact the same thing and equivalent. Suppose first that the probability that tj is less than infinity is equal to 1. We will show that this implies the probability that nj is less than infinity is equal to 0. In other words, if the Markov chain certainly returns, then it never visits state j a finite number of times. So this is the same as saying that the probability that nj equals infinity is equal to 1. So here's our proof. Let lj be a random variable. So it will take different values every time you start the Markov chain. Lj is the last time that the chain starting in state j revisits j. Now it could be infinite, but it must be some positive number. 
It could visit J on the first step and never visit again. In that case, LJ equals 1. It could visit state J on state 2 and never visit again. That would be LJ equals 2. Okay? Now, if it always revisits and keeps revisiting and there's never a last time, then LJ is equal to infinity. Now, the event NJ is less than infinity implies that LJ is less than infinity. Why? Because if the chain visits J a finite number of times, it must visit J a last time. If I look at a chain and see it's hopping from J to another state to another state to another state, and at some point it reaches J and never comes back again, there must be a last time that it visits state J. So, the event NJ less than infinity implies that LJ is less than infinity. Let's apply the conditional probability equation. What we have here, the probability that NJ is less than infinity, so that's my event. I'm going to express that in terms of conditional probabilities based on a partition. Now, we've just showed that LJ forms a partition. Either LJ equals 1, LJ equals 2, LJ equals 3, dot, 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 or it could be infinity. So this is a valid conditional probability equation that gives us the probability that NJ is less than infinity. Right. However, probability LJ equals K is always zero for K less than infinity. Because if the K chain visits state J at step K, the chain will return to state J with probability 1. Okay, think about why this is uh, true. What happens with a Markov chain that starts in state J? Well, as I said, it will start in state J, it will move around. If I write the sequence, it's going to go J, and then J1, and then J2. Now, suppose at state K, after K steps, it returns to state J. What about the future? Well, this is just as if I started the J chain again in state J. It will always return to J. So this cannot be the last visit. At any finite time, it cannot be the last visit. So the probability that LJ equals K is always equal to zero, no matter what finite number K is. Furthermore, the probability that NJ is less than infinity given LJ equals infinity is equal to zero. Why is that? Think about it this way. Suppose NJ is less than infinity. Then there must be a finite last time that the chain reaches J. It's not possible for LJ to be infinity. So if NJ is less than infinity, LJ cannot be equal to infinity. That means that if LJ is equal to infinity, then NJ cannot be less than infinity. The probability that NJ is less than infinity given LJ equals infinity is equal to zero. So if I look at my conditional probability equation up here, all the terms on the right-hand side are equal to zero. The first term is equal to zero because uh, this probability that LJ equals 1 is zero, this probability is zero, and so on. So all these terms are zero. All the finite terms are zero. The last term is zero because this conditional probability is equal to zero. All right? So that means the probability that NJ is less than infinity is equal to zero. What does that mean? That means the probability that NJ equals infinity is equal to one. That means that the chain will always return to J an infinite number of times. So to recapitulate, we have shown if state J of a Markov chain is recurrent, that is the chain always returns to J at least once if started from J then the chain starting in J will always return to J an infinite number of times. This is a very powerful result. Now, if the chain always returns to J an infinite number of times, it will certainly always return to J. So these two statements must be equivalent. So I can write that down. I can say the chain returns to, to J at least once with probability 1. Or I could say it this way. The chain certainly returns to J. at least once, 
that means that the chain certainly returns an infinite number of times. And what I just said is that since the second condition is stronger than the first, we can write this as if and only if. So you see the power of this conditional probability result. Without the conditional probability result, it would be difficult to prove this. Okay.